Hello everyone and welcome and we're finally going to do that video which will be promising not really promising but saying that we will Agro Shaman, let's get it back to standard so we're on diamond 4 at the moment, okay let's get straight into it, so this is an Agro Shaman deck um, the idea, this is one of the most aggressive decks I've ever played in my history of Hearthstone um, it's, it's absolutely but in terms of proportion of going face as opposed to trading on board um, it's really really aggressive it's sort of like it's sort of like a no minion mage just quicker so it's, it's a weird way of putting it but so we definitely want uh, one of the two main keeps we have Burkan, Brukan I keep calling Burkan Cage my cast match custodian draws us our doom, doom hammer. So anything which draws cards and puts something on deck, and it's one of our key cards, which is doom hammer. It's a must keep. So I think this has actually got the highest win rate uh, in the mulligan. As serpent shrine portal, we do that. Even though it's just a damage spell, but it can remove something off the board, or it can go face, and it gives us a three cost minion. Which, are, which on average will be about between five or six stats, three or three, three or something like that. And occasionally you can get luckier. Right, so now we've got really, really good hand here. Rockbiter weapon is amazing with Doomhammer. The question is, do we want to coin out Custodian now? What's next turn going to be? Next turn is going to be Custodian. This. Followed by coining out the Doomhammer, I think. So turn four, we can have our Doomhammer up. If we coin this out, we can't. And I do think we're in any rush to defend ourselves against um, a, Cthulhu Char um, a Cthulhu Warlock, so... You can be slightly slower because we're going to have massive burst anyway. He's killing his own armor anyway. So, yeah, and also these dunk tanks, you want them corrupted. Yeah. Okay. Uh, probably Serpent Shrine. I don't have that many minions, so I don't care about the threat on board here. If I play Brucan. It's going to be with a spell at the same time. So let's just put this. Well, the one thing which could go wrong is if I get a very good minion off this. Let's, let's think about this for a sec. Oh, also, we won't be able to coin out Doomhammer. We won't be able to coin that Doom Hammer, and we don't want to play this. Maybe we just leave the Doom Hammer plan. Do we leave the Doom Hammer plan here? Very good question. This is actually a really tricky turn now. Next turn, coining out Doom Hammer. I'll put me on five mana, three mana when I've actually got the Doom Hammer, so I can really start using this. Yes, yeah, so I don't want to overload him. I'm just going to play the other one. Take that face. Okay. So, and also, we got maximum value out of these because we drew both, both Doom Hammers. So nice, these gold Doom Hammers. They look so good. Okay. Right, and the nice thing about this deck is uh, it, all his uh, board control cards are absolutely meaningless. So the question is now, we've got two Doom Hammers. We could take four damage to this go. Next, maybe we can do something else. We could do a dunk tank, maybe. 
and then the next turn when we've got six seven mana we could play this into this into that so it's for this turn or next turn and then 16 the next turn well that's 20 16 yeah that, that's a bit of junk turn so that's lethal turn seven so we basically planned out uh, till the end of the game here amazing all right So what do we say? We said we can overload here. That's annoying. Um, I just realized we can't use the dunk tank yet. Wait one minute, this gives us five mana to play with. So oh, we'll put this. Um, hmm. Nothing really we can do without overloading this turn, is there? Do we take? A, do we actually take a slow turn here, or do we play rock biter? No, I don't want to play rock biter if we do have a second one to use with a note taker. Rock to represents six damage to face. Uh, unless we do this. Alright, so we're just delaying ourselves a bit more. We'll send the four damage to face. I think we do more damage that way. Okay. So 16 damage, so he doesn't put any taunts or healing. This is not what we stood for. Oh, come on. Let's do this first. Oh, this is obnoxious. So we've got a lethal setup next turn with the double uh, the double rock biter weapon, so I think we'll try it this way around. If not, we've got ten damage to face from spells turn ten. I wonder if I, um, I haven't seen any, not I haven't seen many players playing this deck. He's staying out of lethal damage, okay. We go for the burn here. Let's work this out. <clears throat> so we've got 10 damage straight off, plus another 16 damage for 6 mana. Yeah, and then we can just burn him with spells next turn. Yeah, we'll get him while we still don't have any taunt minions blocking our weapon. Yeah, very nice. This makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you've always got to remember that that uh, weapons are conditional damage. It depends whether you've got taunts in the way, whereas spells generally, unless you're against a paladin or mage, they go over the top. So and he can't tap him. How frustrating for him! What a shame. So he has to tap now. Yeah, he has to tap and hope he gets a soul fragment straight away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he played that really well at the end, actually. Te technically, technically, he played that well. That was uh, the best way he could try surviving. But we saw in our hand was ridiculous amounts of burst damage. And we still had to weapon up as well, I think. Oh no, we actually finished up the weapon charges. Okay. 
Yeah, so we, we went through a bit of a, he, uh, a taunt with some heal. Still managed to win by turn, I think it was turn eight or something like that. Wasn't paying attention. Ooh, almost level 70. Okay. So if you want to climb, this is the deck because I, I think it's going to have a high win rate. Let me check how much is it so far for me. Oh, wow. 83% win rate so far for me. Yeah, uh, it just seems so strong, this. Uh, not that, not that. Um, against the Paladin. What? Custodian. Portal. Do we keep this? I think maybe we play. Hmm. It does give us that extra bit of damage, which might be important. Let's see. If this is Libron Paladin, he's going to have healing and he's going to have taunts. All right, I'm going to take this. Okay. That's really good against Paladin if he gets an even of hope or something like that. Just use a one mana torrent to disable him. Uh, let's try this. Okay. So turn one, get a three, four on board, done three damage. Wow, I think we did the right thing there. Problem is, we're overloaded by one. It looks strange, this. In fact, it is strange. I miscalculated. Oh, I, I, I didn't just overload twice, I overloaded three times. And, never mind. That was a bad mistake there. Yeah, because I knew this was going to happen, so... Okay, I got the lightning bolt, I guess. Huh! Cheeky man. Just use this, then. Oh, the coin actually let, let me get a cheap version of this. Oh, well, that's nice. So that wasn't so bad after all. We've got to be careful here, in case this is Galloping Saviour. I don't have... I don't have the ability to kill it. This turn. Could be an Avenge, but... Okay, and that's quite good. I think we just go with the... I think we've got a good board here, actually, so... Ah. What I'll do for a dunk tank here. Um. Oh, come on. Really? All right. <laughs> Keep that on board. Make him trade him to me. He kills one, the other two survive, hopefully. That goes there, that goes there. Oh, goodness me. Goodness me, Rob. Oh, he's going face. Thank you, that's uh, quite nice. So, that's seven damage. That's a lot of damage. I could just kill him with this now. I messed this up again. I was overloaded. Oh. I hate overload mechanics. Oh goodness. One seven. Alright. So this is probably on my yoke.
I'm going to risk it. Right, what is an, a disposable spell here? Okay. Eight damage. Uh, uh, if this if this does go face, okay, so the, the one extra spell damage. Is it worth it? Oh, wow, okay. Is that oh, my dog, then? Eight. Do I have to go? I have to go for this, don't I? Let's hope it's not oh, my dog. Unfortunately. Any damage to face should be good here. Huh? Just have to hope that he doesn't have uh, all damage with an aggressive deck like his. Conviction. He's got conviction on top of this. Very nerve wracking this. I've got three, six, seven, eight damage. Not on my okay. That must be on my yog. Okay. Backstab him. What do we have? Innovate, okay. Need the taunt here. Don't have the taunt. Um, is that a three, four, oh, one off. One off him. Let me take this face. We have to kill one of these. May as well be this one. Okay. One left. Oh, there we go. Okay, we'll play a very aggressive deck here. Yeah, the, the Paladin aggro deck. We didn't have the best map. We, did, we didn't get a Cage Mask uh, Custodian. That would have made such a big difference. Um, yeah. Well, Zixel Prime in the deck, which was nice. Okay. Let's have another couple of games. Right, so don't want that. Yeah, we can take that. So, right, so, so we should have a good matchup against Warlock. We already saw a good one earlier on in the in the video. Take this zero cost. Uh, so whenever you want to play a uh, spell, you automatically get a zero cost um, spell damage boost. 
a lot of nature spells out there. Oof. Wow. So we play this with that next. Brucan is probably going to end up playing turn 7 with another spell. Just an extra 3 damage. Um, well, if we coin this out this turn, we're going to end up with 2 mana next turn. Makes more sense to just play this by itself next turn. The next turn will be overloaded for 1, we'll have 3 mana. Then we can play this with that. Um, I think we probably want to save the note taker for storm strike. And just hope we get our weapon. Which isn't looking too oh, that's good. Okay, so we're just gonna go straight forward. Oh, and it's also gonna get buffed up, which is a nice little bonus. Ooh. Life steal is always nice. It's completely unnecessary here. Yeah? So next time we're gonna overload for two. That means turn five we'll have three mana. Doesn't look too good. Maybe we just um play something a bit more tame. Is next time we can play the weapon out, but not if we overload. Definitely do not want to play this by itself. This is a key card for some massive burst damage. Not playing it this turn represents nine extra damage. Okay, we're doing three damage here, but with the Doom Hammer, we can do six damage. And assuming we can copy it, it's another 6 damage, so sacrificing 9 damage by playing it now. There's no real need to do that. Do we actually pass here? I hate overload. <laughs> Makes things so complicated. Okay, didn't even get the healing one. Okay. That's the worst totem to get in that situation, because you could just trade into it. Okay, I'm just gonna hope he doesn't get life steal. Yeah, so so that's where the dunk tank might be quite useful. If I dunk the tank a five five. This does five damage AoE, yeah. I think we start we start hitting here. And remember the life steal is not gonna be too mm. We need eight mana to clear his golems completely. Unless he takes the divine shield ones, which is not too bad. So we're gonna have four mana next turn. Okay, that's good. That's good. I stand in wonder. Okay, so he's playing a slow game. Come rock biter, perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Rock biter was what we wanted here. Remember what we said before. Try getting your big weapon damage done up front. Well, he knows I've got lethal now. Burkan gives me seven damage to face. Okay, 
Okay, Birkins is three. So it took you about five damage. Five damage and we got the extra. I can have nine okay, so so this does four plus three is seven plus six for the two spells. Thirteen. I think we've got lethal there. Oh, of course, and we've obviously got Almost killed it. So we do this. <laughs> okay, that was complete massive overkill with any deck, which is slightly slow. Okay. Okay. Be nice to get another uh, opponent besides a warlock. Let's try for one last game. Yeah, I've seen too many warlocks. But you see, this is the thing against, against control warlock, you need absolute all out aggro before he stabilizes. Or you can use an OTK demon hunter. I think that's the only proper strong OTK deck in the meta at the moment. It's not, uh, it's, it's not top tier. I've got a feeling we can actually keep this hand. Another warlock! Oh, I'm sorry everyone, I was hoping to show you some Hunter, Rogue, or something like that. Apparently we've just got Warlock. Yeah, okay. we still draw the Doomhammer. Worst draw next case would be another Doomhammer. It is completely redundant. Okay, here we go. This might be an Enzoth or something like that. Hmm. Yes, it's, 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 you need to... You've already seen me make mistakes with this deck already in this video. One of the hardest things is to plan out your turns. you really got to think out, actually work out accurately each turn for about three or four turns ahead. Because, because of the problem of the overload, you could end up messing your optimal sort of uh, turn order. I think we put Lady Vash down now. See what he does. We don't have any um, spells which do damage this. So if he just kills it for us, and maybe we can draw the uh, Vash Prime or a. Uh, decent amount of cheap spells which is absolutely deadly against almost anyone um, yeah, may, may as well do this just so he knows that we're going to have a weapon with a, a rock biter coming up give him a fair chance you know Also, another little thing, if you do have the option, try, and, and you're worried about big minions. Oh, one minute, do we have a zoo warlock? I think we're facing zoo. Wow. Okay, we're facing zoo. Okay, so we finally got a good matchup. So now we do have to be careful about his minions. I think we ignore the three four. Yeah, make it make him trade. Yeah, if he wants to heal up by playing the other Moshog, then fine, that's his prerogative. He's shown he's in the Chris. Oh, well, I'm so confused now. Luckily, I've got this. As I was saying before, you always want to try playing a spell if you can, so you get a cheap torrent. I didn't, but okay, who cares? 
we've got we've got basically this does 16 damage this does another eight that's 24 damage just with the weapon so we should be fine so we've got five mana six damage uh, lightning bolt now oh, there you go there it is that's the last healing he's got let us try Um, look at four damage. Uh, he could buff that up to eight potentially, I think. Then we've got big turn with Brucan. Possibly fire and structure, depending on what we get. Yeah, we'll do this. I mean, what else are we going to do? That's a question. So maybe we do it this way around. Oh, look, Pater. Very nice. We've got the tidal wave just in case of emergency, which you can actually conveniently play next turn. Well, let's see if this works out, actually. Maybe we just play the tidal wave. Destroy his board, heal up to full. Wow. Okay. I think, unless we've got a lethal show, let's, let's just double check first. This is going to draw us three spells. Oh, that's a dunk tank, torrent, storm strike. It's about zero cost storm strike here. Do we want to overload? No, I think we want to... For honor and glory. We're going to be down to 19 next turn. And I've got 16 damage yet. Yeah, this is lethal. So it would be nice to see the Vaz. Well, we might... shouldn't jump the gun. Maybe I will have to rely on the Vaz. Um, you know, after all... Spell damage draw three spells, reduce the cost by three. It gives me very cheap dunk tanks and things like that. Okay, is anybody getting rid of that? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, this must be lethal. That's six. Not enough, actually. It's a bit frustrating. Um, six, do seven to damage to face. Eight, eight. It's just short. Next turn we can go for the 16 damage to hammer combo, yeah. He's going to think that the main threat is... Do we put another one down? Do we put this down? Five, we need nine mana. Yeah, we can put this down. Because we've got the lightning bloom, so... It's going to be interesting, this. Because also, if he just leaves the spell damage up, then we can go Vash Prime. Hopefully get some lethal off that. Otherwise it looks like it's going to be a Doomhammer turn. He's not expecting the second Doomhammer. Because I've only played one Cage Match Custodian. 
That's always a good start. <laughs> oh, oops. That was very misguided. So I'm not sure he's playing it. This, this card warlock? There's no support for this card warlock, is there? Maybe there is. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Sixteen damage out of nowhere with spare. Could have actually done some more damage than that. So it's almost like an OTK deck. This is it's very similar to Token Druid. You can set something up, and then you can do like half a person's health in damage in over two turns. Here we do half a person's damage over one turn. So. Yeah, it's a really, really aggressive deck. Let's have a look at our um, win rate so far. As I say, I finally found a deck I'm actually enjoying, and I find it actually quite strong. So let's bring up the deck tracker. Here we are. Okay, let's just sort this out. Okay, so let's stretch this down a bit so you see all the games we've played so far. See, so we played a bit yesterday and a bit today. And we actually we actually played this two weeks ago. That's amazing. Yeah, that's before Axel K's video on it as well. Which is funny. Yeah, so he's, he's taking my ideas without me even uh, telling him. <laughs> that even makes sense. Let's see the time travel or something like that. All right, whatever. Okay, so we've got a nice 80% win rate there. And that was really nicely summed up by uh, three out of four wins there which is 75 percent which is not too far off uh we've seen a lot of warlock as you can see here the purple is warlock so third of our games have been warlock at the moment which means that i think warlock's almost a definite win unless you get very unlucky because warlock is is controlling the board and this is one aggro deck which doesn't use the board at all. For example, you, if you've got a, a Demon Hunter uses board, uh, Hunter definitely uses board a lot. Uh, Mage doesn't. Mage is a different story. Paladin uses the board a lot. And and Rogue, Rogue is all about using the board in conjunction with weapons and spells. Um, that's what Rogue is. It's sort of everything one. And of course, Warrior definitely uses the board. Um, so, have a look here. So, we've got two wins against Warlock. We've got Mage, Paladin, Rogue, Druid. We lost a Druid, probably Token Druid, and Spell Mage. And you saw the Aggro Paladin, not the Librem one, the very aggressive one, just out damaged us. Um, however, one, two, four, five, six, we've got a nice little win streak with six games there. Let's go over the actual deck now. I'm not going to make the same mistake as last time, so I'm going to close this down now. Okay, and we're going to actually pull up the deck in game. So you actually get to see the actual cards and the text as I'm talking through the deck. Okay, so. It's a very, very low curve. Uh, you want to get something down turn one. But despite the fact it's a low curve, it's, it's sort of like a halfway between aggro and a tempo deck. This, um, it's more of a burst deck or an OTK deck, to be honest. So because of that OTK factor, that means the Doomhammer with uh, two Rock Biters or Rock Biter with Storm Strike, it's five mana. You can even get three of them if you've got a diligent note taker. You play two, four, six mana plus another three. That's nine mana. So it's nine mana. You can buff your weapon by nine. So you give it twenty-two damage. That's eleven for each swing. That's turn nine. Just in case you don't have the mana, uh, in case you don't have the weapon. We've got this. This is not an You don't need this. To be honest, you don't need this in the deck. It's just good, and there's not that many cards which help the deck as much as this does. 
but yeah you could put an extra you could put a lava burst in if you want or something like that um a raz frost whisper again it's just more damage like uh, in conjunction with your spell damage minions which are brucan which is nature spell damage by three and well that doesn't work with raz frost whisper ironically but um and you've got your novice zappers and you can get two other spell damage minions from here as you saw we got lady vaj which would have drawn us some cheap uh, minions maybe you could put lady vaj in the deck instead of inora storm crash um but i don't have it so but i do like getting it when i get it from all your studies um we've got the lightning boom it's very important for this deck because of the overload in the deck it gets very hard sometimes to make the optimal plays it's not one of the games we had seven mana we needed eight so the lightning boom just gave us an extra mana crystal for that turn but be very careful with overloading this deck because you can end up miscalculating not that you might lose because of it, but you might end up playing suboptimal plays. And this deck, you want to squeeze out every point of damage and hit that juicy face on the other side of the board. So again, so Doomhammer is our real massive damage threat. Um, everything else is basically to do the other half of the damage. Doomhammer will do 16 damage, usually, usually 20 damage each. Doomhammer will do 10 damage the first time and another, another let's say, 4, 8, 12 with the other 4 turns, well, the other 3 turns. That's 10 plus 12, that's 22. You're probably going to have to hit a minion at one of those swings. So on average, your Doomhammer should be doing about 20 damage. So that just makes you have to calculate Rukan, Lightning Bolts, 2 Lightning Bolts, that gives gets you the other... 10 damage gives you 12 actually with a zapper primordial studies into novice zapper it's really good that gives you a zero cost um spell damage minion let's say you want to load up with a few spells one turn so just play that zero cost throw down a portal couple of lightning bolts boom and uh burns down the face dunk tank more face damage it's got the added bonus, as you saw in one of the games, so that if you do manage to corrupt it, that means if you have it in the hand early, you can corrupt it easily with a Doom Hammer. And yeah, it does uh, AoE damage as well. So if you've got Brew Can up as well, it basically does 7 damage to, let's say, face, and does 5 AoE damage, which is absolutely what on earth are you talking about? And We've got landslide as well in case we're playing something something's more aggressive than us the landslide with a bit of a novice snapper it's perfect because it gives us the overload and it gives us the, the spell damage which turns this one damage spell into a full damage spell and it can also break open divine shield with for the first two damage as well which is an extra bonus it's a bit like uh yeah it's a bit like Wind Fury just in a spell. Do damage and do damage again. I never thought of that. Earthquakes also like that. Is that why they put those spells in the shaman? Like do damage and then damage again. A bit like the natural sort of the nature sort of style of uh or theme of shaman. So you know, in nature you get like waves, you get earthquakes and get aftershocks and you know, get ripples and things bouncing back, echoes, you know. Very interesting. Anyway, so uh, okay, so you've got one group of damage is the lightning bolts, zappers, spell damage minions, um, serpent shrine portal, and dunk tank. The other set is basically doom hammer or inara with the weapon buffs, which are storm strike, rock bite as weapon, and they've got diligent note taker, which you just gonna have to calculate it each game um just to get that extra six damage from rock biter or extra six damage from another lightning bolt if you're using it with a brew can so it's extremely flexible diligent note taker and that it's probably a very high win rate when this is played i'm guessing because it just links 
all the different parts of the deck together really nicely. Raz Frost was spent not essential. Again, you can replace this. So if you don't have these legendaries, you could just do without them. Um, Brew can, I would say it's not essential for the deck, but it's very, very strong in the deck. And I think everyone should have one free anyway. Instructor Fireheart. It's in, that's, again, I don't think it's absolutely essential in the deck, but it's really, it, it just rounds off the deck. It gives that the extra push where you, get over, where you can get over the line in times when you need the extra little bit of burst of damage and uh, you kind of run out of stuff. You're playing a strong control deck and you need another 10 damage off the top, but you've got 10 mana, then you can get Instructor Fireheart to try helping you out there. Okay, in terms of the mulligan, the mulligan you want to be keeping against, well, against a, a slow deck, you want to be keeping, well, against all decks, you want Cage Mike Custodian, even against Agro, you want this, because at the end of the day, it puts a 2-2 two -two on, the, on the board, which challenges the Agro's board, and also your weapon later on could be quite useful in knocking down a couple of minions, which which are basically causing trouble, but usually you would never use the Doomhammer for minions, unless it's just like a two damage. You wouldn't use two swings of Doomhammer for a minion, because that means you're taking damage twice from that minion, not a good idea. Um, if you can weave in uh, spells into each turn, then that makes the torrent more reliable as a one. Oh, deal that damage to a minion, cost three less if you cast a spell last turn. Oh yeah, of course, that's right. It makes it one mana, right? Um, so Cage Match Custodian, a must keep. Primordial Studies, I would keep. That gives you flexibility. If you want a Vash for a longer game, you take that. If you just want another Novice Zapper, so you can put, play two, damage, two spell damage for one mana later on. So you play the zero cost Zapper and then the one cost Zapper. So Primordial Studies is good. Um, against aggro, there's no real answer to aggro rather than your aggro is stronger than theirs. So I think more or less the, the mulligan's going to be the same for almost any, every deck. Cage Mesh Custodian, Primordial Studies. Um, if you're scared of a specific redrop, um, like for example, if you watch post or something like that, maybe you need a lightning bolt up facing a rogue. But again, it's you want to focus on your own game plan rather than the opponent's. Uh, landslide, again, very situational. Maybe if you have some sort of information, you know what the deck is, you could keep that, but I wouldn't keep it in most cases. So Cage Match uh, um, Custodium, Primordial Studies. I would keep Serpent, uh, Serpentine, Serpent Shrine Portal in the opening hand. Um, most of the time, because this is just the best tempo, early tempo card we've got in the deck. Because it does three damage, it can remove a, a minion and put our own minion there, only for the cost of four mana effectively, three mana, then the overload. Um, so I would keep the Serpent Shrine portal. Everything else, Rock Bite Weapon, it's only once you've got the Doom Hammer, you can only play Doom Hammer turn three earliest. And and turn four, you, yeah, I guess you could play the rock biter weapon turn four because you've got two men after being overloaded. But don't keep the rock biter weapon or the storm strike. Um, dunk tank is one card you might think of keeping in hand if you've got already cage match Castodian or you've got a doom hammer. Um, in hand, you know, I don't recommend keeping Doom Hammer in hand, but let's say you keep it or you've got a Cage Match Custodian, and that means you're going to have a Doom Hammer by turn three or five, depending if you want to Lightning Bloom it. Then consider keeping Dunk Tank in your hand if you're facing a very aggressive deck like Hunter, which has lots of two and one health minions, or, uh, or Rogue. Uh, and Paladin as well. Paladin's a bit different. It has different sized minions, especially if they get buffed. So that tank's only going to be useful against Paladin if you've got a Zapper or a 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so therefore, you'll make that decision yourself. Okay, that's basically over. Yeah, it's an overview of the whole deck. Uh, Mulligans there, just for short. Zapper, Primordial Studies, Cage Match Custodian, Serpentor Trent Portal, sometimes uh, Dunk Tank. And if you're very scared, then maybe you'd keep a Doom Hammer. Uh, just in case you know you think that you're gonna need an extra one or something like that. If you've got a custodian and doom hammer, they've got weapon removal, maybe keep a doom hammer as well. Because this is the key to the deck, this doom hammer here. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. I hope that was helpful. Please leave a like and subscribe and comments. It really helps the channel. It's really much appreciated. Uh especially Axel K if you're watching this bit. Please click that like button as you usually do. It's nice to have at least one like on my videos. And and then back to Mal as well. Shout out to you. Also one of my loyal viewers. So I've got two. That's nice. Two viewers. Okay. Thanks for watching everyone. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.